Okay, guys, can everybody, uh, can everybody hear me okay? How's the sound? All good? So, yeah, if everyone gets in a seated position, we're doing uh, some yoga birth today. But you are actually a bird. So just imagine for a second that you don't have to worry. You're, you're a bird, you don't have to worry about the world for a second. And we're going to start with some power of meditation. You no longer have to be concerned about what people think about the future. Because you are beautiful. You are a beautiful bird. So just visualize that you are, wherever you live, wherever you are, visualize that you are flying above your town where you live. So you're observing. You're observing your life, you're observing your thoughts rather than being caught up in it. You are a bird, so just visualize you are flying without wings at the moment. And in psychology, this is called cognitive diffusion, the ability to step away from your mind and observe rather than react to your thoughts. Distance perspective. Imagine if you could observe rather than react to your mind, to your bird brain, you can stay present. You can step back from your thoughts. You could fly. No longer any sense of self. Analysis, no worry. And as you're a bird, there's no sort of lockdown rule. So you don't have to be going shopping or on your daily exercise. You can just fly in this newfound, quiet world with no aeroplanes, just nature. Be present, observe your thoughts. Once you observe them from a distance, this cognitive diffusion, they disappear. And when they disappear, you can learn to let your ego dissolve too with your thoughts. And connect to the present moment. You are a parent, free from the constraints of the human mind, fly. Throughout the session, as we start to move and throughout the day, if you find yourself, again, dominated by the constant demand of thinking, 
See if you can fly again, observe. Step away from the mind. Respond, don't react. The next inhale, let's just get your wings out. These metaphorical wings are now really wings, real wings. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, just slowly flap your wings. Nasal breath. Nasal breath in. Nasal breath out. Imagine the air is really heavy, so you're lifting your wings up as you breathe in, reset your shoulders, the air is heavy as you flap your metaphorical wings now. One more big breath in, then we're going to push the out of our mouth. And bring your hands to heart center. Bring your hands behind you and come to the soles of your feet. So just a little half pigeon pecking bird. You're going to bring your left knee to mirror me to your left heel, so creating a nice box here for your hips. And then come around, and a little bit of, of peck. Half pigeon peck, this place is called. Peck, so breathe in, come up, and breathe out, little half pigeon peck. Peck, inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale. Then come to centre. Fill up your belly. Open up your wings. And then as you flap, you're going to flap your right knee this time to your left heel. A little half pigeon peck this side as you breathe out. Peck. Breathe it in. And breathe it out. In. And breathe it out. Just creating a nice bit of space in your pigeon leg. And then exhale, come back to centre. This right leg now is going to swing behind you. The left leg is going to come in, straighten the right leg, and you're going to come into a full pigeon. Now, pigeon. Quite an intense phase for this performance, so bring your heel a bit closer to your groin if you need to. And we're going to do some pigeon dives here. So just breathe in, open up your spine, feel that nice space in your spine. And as you breathe out, just dive down towards the floor. If this is uncomfortable for your knees, you can do this on your back. If it's too tight, just bring your heel closer to your groin. We've got a bit of space, you can move away. No pressure here. Breathing in, looking up. And breathing out, little pigeon. Deep breath in. Open up your body. Create space. Long breath out as you dive forwards. Inhale, come up. Swing your legs around and switch legs. So your left leg comes back behind you now. Your right leg comes up again. Bring the heel closer to your groin if you want to. Open up with the body as you breathe in. And exhale, little pigeon dive. Breathing in, coming up. And breathing out. Release. 
deeper, fuller breath in, long breath, nasal breath out. Inhale and open up your shoulders and exhale, brilliant. Now just to get that movement in your hips and spine in the mornings. And then swing your left leg back around. Your pigeon is now going to become an eagle to open up your wings. Just fly. As you're flying, see if you can take off, see if you can get your bottom to come off of the mat and just float about four foot above the mat. That's it. Am I floating? Yeah. Yeah. So breathe in, come out, thumbs up. If you breathe out, give yourself a hug with the right hand on top. Eagle arms. So your pigeon is now an eagle. If you can, the hands come together, don't worry if you can't. Bring your elbows as high as your feet as you breathe in. And then as you breathe out, just coming forward, flexing the spine, creating some space in your hips and lower back. Breathe it in, coming up. Open up your wings and fly again. Still cognitive diffusion. You're still not yourself, you're still a bird. If you catch yourself thinking and you become human again, just notice, observe, do that cognitive diffusion and come bring your head back into the bird's body. Open up as you breathe in. Open up your shoulders. And as you breathe out, the left hand comes on top. Give yourself a nice hug. Again, your arms come together. And as you breathe in, can you get your elbows as high as your feet? This is Usually I haven't got this big nose. This is nice for me to be able to finally have big features. So breathe in, elbows high for that release in the front of your rotator cup. Bring your drishti, your, your carrot gaze up to your eagle arms. And then come all the way down into that nice open release for your spine. And then inhale, open up your wings. One more time, big wingspan, like a massive eagle here. Look up to the sky, big eagle. Open up your heart, open up your chest, open up your shoulders. And then exhale, release. And this time you're just going to crawl forwards onto all fours. Okay, so you're on all fours now. And then just sit into that nice resting child's pose, resting parrot pose. Then as you breathe in, we're just going to flow through nose first, and then chin, and then chest, just to a small cobra at the moment. And this small movement here, with my neck back and forwards, you might not be seeing it in the parrot, but I'm just like doing a little movement like that, a really important muscle in my neck. Sterling Kido Mastoy really protects and activates that muscle to help for your back. So a little woodpecker from there. And then pepper all the way to the floor. Again, breathing in, coming up. And breathing out, coming down. Pepper. Breathing in, coming up to full upward facing dog this time. If you can, if it's uncomfortable in the back, just come back. And now I want you to just look around like an inquisitive bird, an inquisitive blue tip you can be this time. And the bird is so inquisitive, he's looking around, he's going, how come the world is so quiet? What is going on? This is amazing. So many of us birds out and about. Beautiful noises. I am inquisitive. What are those humans doing? Hmm. It stops thriving. Inquisitive bird creates a nice openness where your thoracic spine and shoulders come forward. And then you're going to curl your toes and pull your hips up to the scalp. So you're in an oh hello. So you're in a nice Downward facing dog now. I'm still a bird. The head was just a 
a mask. You can still be in that bird's body. So nice downward facing dog. Feel that nice release. Feel that nice release. And then you're going to bring your right leg to the sky. Reach through that right foot and then bring that right foot in between the hands. Straighten through your left leg. Ground your back left foot and sweep up to a nice warrior one. Keep reaching through your arms in warrior one. And again, we're going to come to the eagle arm. So you're going to wrap your right arm around your left. See if your hands will come together and bring your elbows nice and high. So breathing in, reaching up, keep straightening through that left leg, activate the left glute, fill that space in your back. And as you breathe out, your hands come to your right foot, you step forward into forward fold, and just come up halfway. So just a halfway forward fold, and again, get your wings out. Breathe in open, and breathe out close. Breathe in open and breathe out close. Now your wings, you can come into the very famous flapping ostrich pose by bringing your weight into your right leg and become that flapping ostrich. Breathe it in and breathe it out. Breathe it in and breathe it out. Bring your left leg down, bring your right leg off if you can and breathe in. And breathe out. Flapping ostrich. And come back into that forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins, flat back. Exhale, fold forwards and step back to back. Strong straight spine, so your hands are numb, your shoulders, your core is strong, you're tucking your belly in as you breathe in. And then as you breathe out, come down, knees, chin, chest, or nice yoga yeah, press up. Inhale, come up, to upward facing dog, inquisitive blue tip. Again, looking around like an inquisitive blue tip, inquisitive bird. Just being in some nice space, your inquisition has created some nice thoracic rotation. Thank you, Inquisition. Nice movement. And again, little upward dog woodpecker, this little pecking motion. Excellent for neck health. Woodpecker, 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 wood. Look up to the sky, curl your toes. Pull your hips up to the sky. The left leg comes high this time. Straight through that left leg as much as you can. Then bring the left leg between the hands, ground the right foot, sweep up to warrior one with the left leg forwards. This time you're going to hug yourself again. The left hand on top, hands come together. Keep straightening through this back leg. And then bring your elbows as high as your beak. Oh, I've still got the mask on. <laughs> so reach up and keep straightening through that back leg. Eagle arms. Exhale. Coming to the floor. Step forwards into forward fold and come up to the half flapping ostrich. Massive wingspan. Massive wings. And fly. As you fly here, might help if you make a sort of noise. But that really is also really good for activating muscles in your back really important obviously in yoga to hard to activate those upper body posterior chain muscles but now we've got wings it's a lot easier so you're using those wings to activate the muscles in your back external rotator cuffs you are flying breathe in come up to the flapping ostrich and breathe out switch legs breathe in Breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out, forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins, flat back, get your wings out one last time, and then exhale, fold forward, step back to back. Options here, 
Just protract and retract your shoulders, or you can drop your knees. So those muscles in your scap around your scapula are really important here, so that you're using your wings efficiently when you fly to make sure the scapula is nice and loose. The shoulders are strong and stable and effective, efficient scapular movement. Breathe in, tuck your belly in. As you breathe out, choose your option. Knees to chest or chest around. Inhale, upward facing dog. Shoulders back. Open up that new scapula. And look up to the sky. And then just a little bit of a woodpeck here. Good, good, good. And then inhale, come up. Three little pecks again, coming down. Woodpecker, woodpecker, woodpecker. Very fortunate to have a beak like this. If you haven't got a beak as conducive as mine, don't worry. It still works. Your beak will still be efficient. One more. Beak, beak, beak. Upward facing dog. Curl your chest. Downward facing dog. Right leg comes in between the hands. This time you're going to. Ground the back heel, come up to warrior one, and then you're going to straighten both your legs. So you're reaching nice and long. I'll show you from a diagonal here. You're reaching nice and long, your right legs forward. So bring your little turtle's head through, not through too long though, with the verbal eat it, and then end inhale. As you exhale, you're going to swan dive. You are a swan, and you are diving, and your right hand's going to come under your right leg. You've got space in your hips, you can keep your wings out. If you haven't, you can keep your hands down. So we're gonna flow between those positions. So you might even be here, it doesn't matter as long as you're creating a bit of space. There's no ego in your in the bird world. There's no like, oh, can I do a swan dive or not? It's just you do what you can and you don't worry if you can't. You just make the easier options to breathe in and breathe out. You are a bird. Breathing in, swan dive, one more, hold your swan, so this position is the injured swan, I think, I think that's what I read in the uh, textbook, the injured swan, yeah, so in your injured swan, can you get your wings out? And now you become a seagull. Close your eyes, you're a seagull. I want you to imagine you're an eel for coon. You're looking around and you're thinking, why is no one eating fish and chips? What is going on? Fly down, no fish and chips. Tough times. And you are a seagull. You're not yourself, all right? You're a seagull. If your mind comes back, just cognitive diffusion, observe it. And Bring your head back into the seagull body. And see if you can accept the fact that there's no fish and chips and go and just then go back to the sea and see if you can hunt naturally. Inhale, come all the way up straight in both legs. Exhale, come into that warrior one with the eagle arms. This time we're going to fly. So watch me, I'm going to breathe in. We're going to float down, moving very fluidly to the right ankle and then back to the left. And all the way up, nice big fluid circles flowing down that nice eagle flow. Let it flow, let yourself go. Eagle. Exhale, release your hands to the floor. Now you're going to walk your hands very low all the way to your left foot. Ground the back foot, so um, worry, it's all about the position of your pelvis. So the back foot has to be diagonal. The front heel has to be in line with the back heel or the middle of the back foot. And then just load that front knee in line with the ankle, so you've got nice stability and protection from the foot, the ankle, the knee. And you're in warrior one, and you're straightening through that back leg. Activate this buttock, and then straighten your little bird's legs, little chicken legs like mine. You are long, you are strong, you are active, you are breathing in, and as you breathe out, you're swan diving. To here. Now, again, depends on the space in your hips. Just even if you get your arm a little bit under your leg, 
That's fine. Breathing in, straighten, lengthen, activate. Tension here, breathing out. Inhale. Exhale. One more, breathing in. Breathe it out. You are a seagull. Close your eyes. Wherever you live, you're in your town. There's no humans, there's just hundreds of seagulls. And you're so relaxed. And you're open. There's no ego. There's no, can I do this position? Seagulls don't care about that. It's just a simple life. So just ease back if this is uncomfortable. If you can fly, fly. Helps if you squawk here. I'm a little shy seagull, mine. I don't know why, a little shy seagull. And then walk your hands all the way back to your right foot. Walk your right foot. <coughs> to your left hand and come into half pigeon again. So another bird here. This is a pigeon. This is quite, um, I think we'll call this one the exhibitionist pigeon because he's, he's not just a pigeon who's gonna woodpeck because he's done that. So straight into the left leg, your exhibitionist pi pigeon puts his right hand along his right chin and opens up his wing. So he's sort of showing the world his breasts this exhibitionist pigeon, like this. I am an exhibitionist pigeon. That wasn't even on the list, exhibitionist pigeon. That's a new, another new one. <laughs> None of these are on the list. Open up as you breathe in. Show your pigeon breasts. And then breathe out, come forward. Pigeon chest, pigeon breasts. Long pigeon. The pigeon's quite an intense pose. So rather than start to react as a human, bring your head inside a pigeon's brain this time. And as the pigeon's brain, life is so simple when you're a pigeon, you're straightening through this back leg, you're bringing the front of this hip towards the heel, and you're just easing into that space. So you can breathe into the space rather than react to it. And then inhale, coming all the way up your hands. Kick your pigeon leg to the sky. Give it a little shake. And step all the way through. Come in nice and low in your bird world. Back to your left leg. Pigeon this side. Your left foot comes to your right hand. Remember if you've got knee issues just do this pose on your back. Your hips want to be facing forward. So if you're Left buttock is touching the floor. Bring your heel closer to your groin. And let's just open up. And your exhibitionist pigeon is going to show the world his pigeon chest. Hello, world. These are my pigeon breasts. <sighs> open up. So the good thing about pigeons as well, they're not sort of shy to show their breasts like this. It's almost like being in the south of France. Come and open. Nice, big pigeon tits and breathe in. And breathe out, come into that full pigeon. Keep straightening through that back leg. Bring the right side of your pelvis to your right heel. And again, you might notice one side's holding a bit more tension than the other, so ease back. And then again, as you bring your mind into the pigeon's head, you're no longer reacting as a human. Observe yourself. When you learn to observe, this is quite a good metaphor, being the bird, because when you do learn to observe your thoughts, you can then control your emotional state. You can affect your body's response to stress, fear, anxiety, anger, just by being a bird. So hopefully, we haven't done this too well and you'll be stuck 
with a bird brain for the rest of your life and I'll get sued. But you'll probably be able to use your human brain again, probably, when you need it. But come back to a bird when you don't, when, when it's becoming a bit dysfunctional. <laughs> Breathing in. Open up your pigeon chest and then kick that left leg to the sky. Give it a shake. Bring the left leg in between the hands and walk your hands into the middle of your mat. So bring your hands behind your head and come into the woodpecker two. So the woodpecker two is retracted in the scapula, fingertips high, strong and long in the hamstrings, and then he's just pecking at some food. And if your beak or your hamstrings aren't long enough, unfortunately, you're going to go hungry here. So it's good motivation for you to lengthen your nose and hamstrings so you can feed in this woodpecker position in the future. Woodpecker. Reach. So my beak's not long enough as a human. First time it hasn't been long enough for a while. Feel that nice woodpecker release. And then bring your legs, hands to the floor. And just come into those hips. We're going to come into warrior two from here. So the right, this is nice hippie, hippie, hippie action. But the right foot faces forwards, the right knee is in line with the right ankle, and then we're going to come up to the warrior two. So where is your torso? Is it here? If it is, bring it back. Imagine I'm doing that birch adjustment where I put my foot there and I'm putting you back. And you're straight in that back leg and you're in a warrior two, slightly different family for your hips. If you're feeling tight here, activate this butt up here and see if you can feel your wings being nice and small. So just fly again, the warrior two bird. And again, if you're really strong in mind, you might be able to levitate here. Why not? Inhale, come in. Exhale, open your wingspan. Inhale, come in. Open your wingspan. Fly. You're going to dive again. This time, we warmed up for this. Your right arm is going to come under your right leg. So if that's uncomfortable or if that's tight, just stay there with your elbow on your knee. That's fine. Some of you will be able to do this, where your left hand comes behind your back and link. But don't force that, just stay there, that's fine. If you can link, there's an option for a bird of paradise here. So your left leg comes in, and then you stand on your left leg, and you've still got that bite, and then you straighten through that right leg. So my hamstrings are particularly tight today, but that's all right, there's no hamstring ego, because I'm a parrot. And even if I wasn't, I, you know, there wouldn't be an ego. So you are a bird of paradise. If you're not a bird of paradise, you can be this. You can be sort of a, what can you be? Just sort of a bird. Just a bird is not in paradise. He's just in Barnstable. A bird of Barnstable is fine. Although the legs would be a bit more open. And I've said too much. <laughs> Take a nice big breath in. And breathe out, relax. Drop that left leg back behind you and walk in all the way around to your left But Make sure your left toe is facing there and come into that warrior two position. So, where are you? Oh, you're in a bird, that's right. But where's your body's position? Can you bring your shoulders back? Can you give me hips square? Can you open up your wings? Flap your wings, check your position, it's your knee and arm, the ankle, you're activating this back glute, back your wings, breathe in, come in, breathe out, wingspan is huge, inhale, massive wingspan, breathe in, in. breathe in out, and then choose your bird, so your bird could be a bird of paradise, which is a, the yoga pose, the bird of paradise, or the bird of Barnstable, 
which is another new, nice new one we've invented. So the right leg comes behind your hand. If you can, so you can stay here, the key is to keep the hips square. So what you don't want to do, you don't want to bind, but then be like shoulder down, and compressed and round. You want to keep the openness through your body. And there, your right leg comes in. Come into your bird of paradise, where you straighten, activate this glute extension, and then straighten that left leg into that bird of paradise. If that's too uncomfortable, just come into your bird of basketball position, which is here. Bird of Barnstable Town. Bird of Paradise or Bird of Barnstable. Step that left leg all the way back behind you. Kick the right leg to the sky. Give a little shake. Bring the right leg now outside the right hand and the left leg outside the left hand. So you're in this position. This position. Again, you can be here higher if you want. And then let's open up our wings again. So we're still birding, we're still flying. Left hand out, right hand comes high. Big bird, big bird fly. Open. One more breath in as you fill up the belly and then breathe out the other side. Massive wingspan. Now fly down to your local pond and then just do impression of a duck. So you're quack, 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 quack. Nice strength and stability in this duck. One more time. And move in chair. Quack, 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 and forward far. Strong anaerobic thresholds ducks have in their legs, don't they? Just bring the knees towards the armpits there. Quack in, quack in effort in the duck. Then, of course, one of the most influential of all the yoga birds, the crow pose. So if you even if you can't do the crow pose, there is no ego in crow world either. Just loud squawks. As you bring your hands in line with your shoulders, you're strengthening those shoulders to protect them. And then if you can, you want your knees to come to the back of your triceps, back of your arm, and just float into your Bhagasana crow pose. If that's too challenging, just try a couple of these. Just a couple, little movement. A little movement. If you can crow, Cry. Strong, straight spine, open up that back. And drop your heels to the floor. Bring the weight from your right leg to your left. Curl up to standing. So your duck is now going to become a penguin. The penguin has got quite a big chest like this, and we're going to extend the lower back and then do penguin walk. And then a penguin walk back. Penguin walk forwards. <laughs> and Penguin walk, that's probably the worst one I've done, isn't it? The <laughs> penguin, that wasn't on the lesson class. And then forward forward. <laughs> Sorry about the penguin. Nice there, nice extension of the spine, nice activation of the knee. Not all bad in the penguin. Inhale, curl all the way up to standing. Give your shoulders a nice break after all that flying. The proprioceptive pigeon, he stands on his one leg. And when this pigeon stands on his one leg, he creates blood flow 
to the ankles, the knees, he creates stability, starting from the foot, grounding from the toes, the balls of the foot, the middle of the toes, the heels. Grab your other pigeon leg, your right leg, place your right leg on your thigh, and your proprioceptive pigeon starts here. You just slip your bottom out slightly. Let's get your wings out again. Open the thumbs up and notice that healthy rotator cuff to support your wings, support your flying. Some of you have got space in your pigeon legs, might come all the way down here, might bring the foot to the bicep. Doesn't matter if you can't, you're still here, here, wherever you are. If you're in the full proprioceptive pigeon, some of you might want to take off. So if any flying pigeons out there, you can take off into this flying pigeon pose. Because of course, that is just an option. There's no ego in the pigeon world either. Just healthy necks from all the don't know if you the master of action from all the pecking. So just hold, bring the rhythm back to your breath. Give your pigeon legs a little shake. Move your shoulders. Move your spine. And then switch. So standing on your right leg now, pigeons. Even this, proprioception, proprioception, balance reception, balance receptors, really good for pigeons and humans, I would imagine. Get blood flow to our ankle, our knee, stabilizing, strengthening, active in this pigeon buttock. Pigeons have buttocks. Sure. From the left pigeon leg to the standing right leg. And again, whoop. Windy pigeons, I'm sitting into wherever your pigeon wants to come. So don't force this. You might be like a bit tighter on this side of the pigeon. You might be a bit looser. You can just start here. It's Kiana Mudra from a holding of the Gaba and then come down. Open your wings and not move. And then some of you might be keen to put your pigeon foot on your pigeon bicep. Nice breathing here. And then if any of you pigeons want to take off and take advantage of the no lockdown rules for pigeons, um, you could take off. Even if there was lockdown rules, you could still be okay to take off for one hour a day, as long as you don't drive there. You can't drive the pigeon. So come up. You are a flying pigeon. Even if you're not a flying pigeon, remember, there's no self-evaluation, there's no care in the bird brain of what other people think. It's just what you think of yourself. And you don't care about that either. But if you did, you'd be beautiful. And stand up. Give that a little shake. Open up your pigeon necks. Bring your hands behind you again. Open up your pigeon chest. Pigeon chested, extension in the shoulders. Big, big, thumbs down. Woodpecker, 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 wood. Woodpecker, 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 should. Woody, 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 woodpecker. Woody, 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 woodpecker. Woody, wood, woody, woodpecker. Woody, 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 woodpecker, woodpecker. It's a nice openness in the hamstrings, nice space. Now, a nice antithesis this for your pigeon chested activity, just getting that nice space in your wings. Nice space through the back, drop your hands to the floor. Walk your hands to your right foot, step back to the back. Drop your knees. Bring your fingertips to your knees and just rotate the spine now, giving your back a nice release. It's quite challenging 
when you have wings and you can fly, you really start to be strong in the back because those wings, external rotation, abduction takes quite a lot of strength. So important that we try and release space in the spine after all that flying we've been doing. And even if you're not a bird, you can still, because the visualization has been so strong, you'll still feel some tension there and you'll not through that fly. Good. And then one of the hardest bird poses in society is a peacock. So first of all, if you can, your fingertips face your knees and you're just going to see if you can tuck your belly, your elbows into your belly and just hold in that half a peacock. And some of you might be able to get your feet off of the floor. I don't seem to be able to. What's going on? But that's cool. There's no ego in the bird world. There's my peacock. Right. So I'm going to start. I'll work on my peacock for next time. But if you can, peacock, you dig your, you bring your shoulders underneath you, you ping your elbows in your belly, and your feet are coming off the floor. <laughs> Injured peacock. <laughs> Injured peacock. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry the peacock can't use the nhs anyway and the vets are still open on thursdays so after all that peacocky wrist stuff just uh <laughs> release tension in your wrists <clears throat> I'm not a peacock, I'm just a cock. I'm not a peacock, just a cock. So, your right hand comes under, your side of your head comes to the floor and open up your wings. Open up those wings. Bring that left hand back. If you feel confident, you can get your pigeon leg out here. Left leg out, your toes facing the floor. Little birds you've done today. Oh, we forgot the eagle. We haven't done the full eagle. Have we got time for a quick eagle? What time is it? Let's do a quick eagle. Just come to the other side, quick eagle, and then we'll do the upside down bird. The left hand comes through, right hand comes to the sky. Right leg can come to the sky. Bring your toe down to face the floor so you're really engaging again. Proprioceptors, core balance, openness. That's expansion with your wings. Upward facing bird. Cat bird. Curl your toes. Right leg in between your hands. Walk your hands in front of the right foot and come up. So you're straightening through. So your right foot's down, your left leg is high. We're just going to do one quick eagle. Hug the knee in. I want to activate this glute that's standing. I want this floppy. So test your uh, bird bum. Bird bum. And then that left leg comes around the right. Give yourself that hug we were giving ourselves before. Left hand on top, hands together. And can you come to an eagle? This is your eagle. And then come deep in your eagle. Stay in it with your eagle legs. Open up your eagle wings. Open up your eagle wings. Reach. Imagine I'm pulling your wings as far away as you can. And then bring your wings back together. And let's do one eagle sit up. Nice to see an eagle with abdominals, even though they've got no ego. Your abdominals protect and support the pelvis. Not egotistical abdominals. This left leg comes to the floor. This right leg comes to the sky. Hug the right knee into the chin. Active through the left glute here. So just test that left glute strong and straight and then that leg comes around the right leg comes around find that balance give yourself a hug so your right hand's on top this time so then hands come together you're an ego breathe in and deeper breathe out open your ego wings bigger wingspan as you can actually thumbs back open your wingspan as much as you can and then come back to the eagle arms. Do one eagle sit up, elbows to knees. Open up your eagle wings and release. 
sit, bring your feet wider than your hips, and then sit down, bring your hands behind you, bring your bottom to the floor. So first of all, lengthen the spine, bring your wings out. If you want to bring your legs out, you can. Just fly here. Again, the boat bird, the boaty bird. Bend your knees if that's too much. Put your wings away if it's still loading your back. Bring the rhythm to your breath now, breathing in. And breathing out. One more deep breath in, five seconds. One more long breath out. Bring your bird feet to the floor and bring your hands up. And I just want you to peel down now, see if you can control the descent. One vertebra at a time. Imagine I'm picking up your wings and lifting them to the sky, improving your wingspan to improve your performance, your speed in flying, to improve your protect your wings from injury. Push your hips high into your bird bridge. And then you're going to flap your wings. Let me show you from here. Flap your wing in that bridge. Inhale and open. Exhale. You are nice upside down bird bridge. Have a very popular pose. Upside down bird bridge. Inhale and open. Reach your hands, reach your wings, sorry, above your head. Reach your wing high. And then curl down your bird back one vertebra at a time. Hug your left bird knee in. Bring your left leg, sorry, bring your right leg over your left. Twisted root, so bring your right foot under your left if you can. And then slowly bring your legs to your left hand side, looking at your right hand. The twisted roots too much, just come to a nice bird spinal twist. Opening up for your birds. Bring the rhythm back to your breath now. So, see again now if you can affect your bird physiology with your breath. See if you can, as you bring the rhythm to your breath, slow down the response of your body and to this nice calming. Um, parasympathetic state when we rest, we recover from all that burden, diving, switch legs, bring your left leg over your right, and then bring your knees over to the right side, keeping your left shoulder down, looking at your left wing. Nice stretch, this one for your chest, after all that flying. It's important to release tension here, across the shoulders, across the spine. As you breathe now, I want you to come back to that space we started with, that space where you are beyond the mind. When we go beyond the mind, in this case, visualize it being in flight. You're looking down on your thoughts rather than being lost and transformed by them. As you look down on them, as you observe them, they lose their power as you accept. You come away. You don't no longer react. A state in which there is no self doesn't mean you lose control of your goals. It just means you're more connected to each moment, more strongly connected to your goals. less dominated by the thinking. Analytical mind means you've got more power to focus on what's important, to focus on flying at the moment. You open up your wings, come back to centre, hug your bird legs into the chest. And anything else you'd like to do before we come to Shavasana, you can do it now. Otherwise, we're going to do a big Pastarika Pranayama, bird breath. So we're going to breathe in for our mouth this time. Belly first, pull the air in chest, then all the air into your shoulders. And then you're going to push all that air out. And again, belly first, chest, shoulders, 
and then push. The birds have gone insane. One more. Very bad. Chest. Move the arms, your shoulders, and head, and then push. And then there's nothing left to do now. Floating, you are flying. Close your eyes, open your mind. In Shavasana, you surrender. Surrender to the human mind. Fly. Your human thoughts start to come back, what's coming next, what you're going to eat, what you're going to do for the rest of the day. Fly above them, observe them, and watch them disintegrate so you can focus in this very moment. Rare opportunity to give your mind a rest from continuous and constant thoughts. And we can do that. We train our body to better re to recover. And we train better recovery, better rest, better ability to switch off. We can better endure stress. We can be more efficient when we need to. It's not detaching yourself from efficiency and significance. It's being able to do both, which heightens and optimizes your potential when you need it. Just as a bird for a few more minutes, and then if you can gain this distance perspective, see if you can bring that ability to distance perspective with you beyond this bird practice, the rest of the day, the rest of the week. See if you can start to think about reacting, which means you become more logical or your thoughts come from your human brain, what's more important to you, your values, your goals, rather than the emotions that are brought up. And hopefully you can get your human brain back and you're not stuck with a bird brain for the rest of the day. And hope you enjoy your weekend. And you can stay in this shavasana for longer if you need to, if you have time. And I'll thank you for practicing today. And I'll see you next week. Namaste.